Last semester, I walked into my intro to management class where there was about 35 undergraduate students. When I walked in, I noticed that they looked really tired. Mind you, it was an 11 o'clock in the morning class. It was not 8 o'clock, so it really wasn't that early. And they were yawning. Some of them had their head on the desk. And the first thing I thought to myself, well, it can't be me because I haven't even started class yet. So I decided to ask them, guys, what's up? Why are you always so tired when you come to class? And you know what they told me? They told me they weren't sleeping. They were worried about getting a job and keeping a job for the next 10, 20, 40, or even 50 years from now. And you know what? They're not alone. According to a Cowan Washington Research Group survey, 52 million workers suffer from job insecurity. And according to a Brookings Institute report, 37% of the workforce is afraid of losing their job directly to automation. Now these are big numbers and we as humans really need to understand how we can keep our career relevance in this age of automation. Now falsely, many people believe that automation is only replacing blue collar workers, right? We've all seen the robots roaming around the Amazon warehouse floors. We've seen driverless cars and we've all experienced an ATM machine. But what's not talked about as much is the idea that automation is taking over parts of white collar jobs as well. Take the law profession for an example. A lawyer, the epitome of white collar work. Well now, parts of law can be automated. Contracts can be automated. Much of the legal research can be automated. And what about journalism? Journalism is another white collar job. And consider the article you may have been reading over a cup of coffee this morning. Who wrote it? Was it a human being? Or was it a natural language generation software? You can see automation is entering our lives in, at every aspect. So how do we protect ourselves? Well, according to the president of Northeastern University, Dr. Art Moon, he talks about something called humanics. And what humanics is, is three different literacies. The first literacy is technical literacy, and the second is data literacy, and the third is human literacies. So when we're talking about technical literacies, we're talking about how machines function. Okay, it's not enough to understand how to use that piece of software or that app. We really need to know what's going on behind that screen. And data literacy, with all the information, piles, massive amounts of information that we get on a regular basis, we need to be able to analyze, synthesize, and make sense of that information. And with human literacies, well, that is the key to keeping ourselves secure in the age of automation because it, it's, it deals with the ability to empathize with others, to communicate with others, to think holistically. Think about, as an example, the last time you called your phone company and you got the automated system and it asked you a number of questions and says, press one for this, two for that, and so on down the line. You get to the end and you don't know what to press because your problem doesn't fit into that predefined box. We're not an algorithm that follows a set of rules. We, as human beings, need to be able to be outside that defined box. So, why are you pressing zero at the end to get to an operator? Well, one, you need someone to empathize with you now because you're frustrated. But more importantly is you really need a human being to help solve a complex problem that is not predefined. So you see, these three literacies are extremely important. And what's more is that Dr. Arun and others, including research from Burning Glass Technologies, talk about the idea of cognitive skills, which include creativity, innovation, entrepreneurship, critical thinking. So take creativity as an example. That skill ranks number one on LinkedIn's top 10 skill index. In fact, it is the most sought after skill by employers. Why? Because creativity leads to innovation. And without people being able to innovate, it is the people creating new things and innovating, not the machines, we won't have new products or services. And what about critical thinking? Again, another skill that uses system thinking and holistic thinking to solve complex problems. So consider the three literacies and the cognitive skills. Couple them together and think about what is now known as a hybrid job. A hybrid job is a job that is multifaceted, takes skills from multiple domains, and they're complex jobs. So according to Burning Glass, they're actually calling a hybrid job the secret to career success in the age of automation. 
So as an example, take a human-centered research designer, right? Someone that's skilled in research methods, ethnographic research, ideation methods, storyboarding perhaps. Now take another person that has that same skill set, but they also know how to prototype using InVision or can create web interfaces. Maybe they can even code. Who is more marketable, right? It's the person that can fulfill the needs of a hybrid job. And another example might be a marketing manager. Someone might be a marketing manager and very skilled at creating an incredible communications plan and maybe a really, really fantastic marketing strategy. Take that same person and add the skills of being able to understand digital marketing, SEO, PPC. And again, who's more marketable? It's the person with the ability to have a, a fulfilled skill set, right? And so what do we say? What, what do I say to my students now? At the end of the day, it's all about getting my students to a point of understanding that they should stop worrying about their career success in the future. So my advice to them is build your technical skills, build your data skills, build your human literacies, your creativity, your innovation. Get yourself a hybrid job because it is the intersection of all three that is going to keep you relevant in this age of AI. Thank you.